If you use Photoshop, it's likely you already know about the incredible power and versatility of layers and layer masks for creating advanced composites and really any kind of production or creative oriented work. In Photoshop CS4, layer masks have undergone a dramatic new enhancement in that they are now non-destructive. Let's take a look at how that works. I'll go into the brand new adjustments pane in Photoshop and what we see here is instant access to any of the adjustment layers that we would typically use for non-destructive color correction. Let's go ahead and click on my curves control, creating a brand new curves color correction. All right, we're gonna make a couple of control points in here and effectively what's gonna happen by creating this C-shaped curve, we're gonna brighten the overall image. Now that's all good and fine, but really what I wanna have happen here is I'd like that brightness enhancement to happen only in the darker parts of this piranha's head. Here's how we make that happen. I'm gonna click on the masks pane. Now this is another brand new enhancement in Photoshop CS4. I can see that my layer mask for this curves color correction adjustment layer is indeed currently active. And that means that what I can now do is click on, let's say the color range tool. Color range is one of the most useful tools in Photoshop for creating uh, masks for specific portions of an image based on their brightness and or color. What I'm gonna do here is make sure that by clicking my eyedropper at the top of the piranha's head, the part where it's dark, I can see here that I'm creating a mask specifically for those areas. It's picking up some of the darker areas right under the piranha's mouth as well. That's fine. I'm gonna click on OK. And what I now have is an enhancement to the brightness levels of just the top of this image, just where it's dark. I can see a before and after by clicking on the visibility tool for that color correction layer. And I see exactly what's happening. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna turn this back on and I'll hold down the option key on my keyboard and click on that layer mask. This in Photoshop allows me to see at full size the current layer mask. Now, I've got a feather command. And normally, if I wanted to filter and process a layer mask, I'd have to use something like the Gaussian Blur filter. But what happens in CS4 is very different. If I grab my feather slider and drag it, what I see is that I am indeed feathering and softening this layer mask, but I never lose the original crisp, sharp version of the layer mask that I started with. This is a big deal. Now in this specific example, let's go ahead and take a look at what's really happening out in the image. I'm gonna click with the option key pressed on the layer mask again. And what I'm seeing now as I drag the feathering slider is I'm seeing a softer, better integration of that lightning effect with the surrounding areas. Because of the fact that the layer masks are now non-destructive, I can do this all I want and never lose my original sharp mask. In fact, let's take another look at how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my hue saturation command, one that I would normally use to change the colors of something. This makes a new hue saturation control. I'm gonna drag it to the top. And what I'm gonna do here is use the masks pane open up color range, and what I'm gonna do is change the color just of the underside of the piranha's head. In fact, I'll start here, I'll click on my add colors to the color range and drag outwards. This is getting a bunch of the other yellow tonality that's in the piranha's face over here in its mouth. I'll click on OK, and now if I click over on the adjustments pane, I have my use saturation command, I can now change the color of the bottom part of the piranha's head. I guess maybe this is just after he's eaten. Um, but also, let me click back over on masks here, make sure that that layer mask is selected for this hue saturation control. And by increasing the feathering, I'm creating a softer integration of that red tint with the surrounding areas. So here is before, and here is after. Because of the fact that those layer masks are now non-destructive, as long as I save this file in Photoshop file format, I can come in at any time and always have access to the original sharp layer masks, modify them in any way that I want using the feather tools, using all of the rather extensive controls in the refine mask command, something that was added to Photoshop CS3, 
I'll cancel out of that. And it's all non-destructive. If you use layers and layer masks in Photoshop, you will love the new non-destructive layer masking in Photoshop CS4.